I think this is going to be a great way to involve all communities and increase representation of communities that aren't seen as much in the outdoors. And so I think that's going to make a huge difference in getting a variety of people and perspective and change. From Tyler Technologies, it's the Tyler Tech Podcast, where we talk about issues facing communities today and highlight the people, places, and technology making a difference. My name is Jeff Harrell. I'm the Director of Content Marketing here at Tyler, and I'm so glad that you've joined us. Well, summer is here. It's in full swing, and the number of visitors to shared outdoor spaces such as state parks and campgrounds is just ramping up as families are rushing out to get vacations in before return of fall and the return, of course, of the school year. Well, in this episode, we learn tips for planning those outdoor adventures from Melissa Miller. Melissa is an outdoors enthusiast and influencer. She's actually known as Miss Rover. Now, Miss Rover uses Tyler's NIC Outdoor and USE Direct for both campground and outdoor recreation management. This episode is hosted by Ricky Ragland, our media relations manager here at Tyler. And she talks with Miss Rover about the importance of equity and inclusion in outdoor recreation, how the state of California has recently launched innovative programs to help make outdoor recreation even more accessible, and how technology plays a role in Miss Rover's personal outdoor adventures. Here is Ricky Ragland's conversation with Miss Rover. Welcome to the Tyler Technology Podcast. I'm Ricky Ragland, your guest host, filling in for Jeff Harrell. If you love getting outside, especially for hiking and camping, you're really going to enjoy the discussion with today's guest. You may already be one of her followers on social media. Miss Rover lives in Northern California and is an outdoor enthusiast and influencer who has visited four California state parks, she uses recreation dynamics to make reservations, bypasses, and book campsites. She's eager to talk about her experiences in the outdoors, not just in California, but across the country. And as an avid hiker and camper, sometimes you'll find Miss Rover camping in a tent and other times in her van. She's an advocate for people to all communities to get outdoors and loves the equity and inclusion programs that California State Parks has implemented. Ms. Rover, welcome to the Tyler Technologies podcast. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you as well. First of all, can you tell me about your handle, Ms. Rover, and your mission as an outdoors influencer? Yeah, Miss Rover kind of came about randomly. I, my name is Melissa Miller, and it's very popular. So I wanted something that kind of stood out and that was more, you know, women-based and travel-based. My mission, I mean, it kind of started when I myself traveled across the U.S. to move to the West Coast and at the young age of 25. And so many people reached out to me. How did you do that? I wish I could do that as well. And I was lucky that I had a friend that was outdoorsy to kind of give me guidance. And I realized how rare that was. And so I kind of wanted to be that person, you know, for as many people as I could be. What inspired you to begin documenting your travels? I had so many family members kind of questioning what I was doing and, you know, asking for updates on the trip. And, and that was an easy way for me to kind of give them an overview of what I did and also for friends that were wanting to do the same and just wanting to empower and inspire more people to get out there on any budget. And because I was definitely a broke <laughs> postgraduate, you know, student. So that was definitely a, a goal of mine. Well, the neat thing I think about getting outdoors now versus say 15, 20 years ago is that the the lay of the land has really changed when it comes to technology. Now, I know that you recently visited several state parks in Northern California. How did you use the technology to aid you in your experience? Well, my most recent trip was to a state park in California called Castle Craig State Park. Basically, the trip was inspired because I wanted to find warm weather. I was tired of <laughs> the coastal marine layer, kind of chilly weather. And I saw that it was sunny. I was kind of just like browsing Northern California, like, where's the sun? 
So I came across Castle Craig State Park and saw that there was availability on the Reserve California website. So I kind of used that as like my base of planning the trip because traveling in a van, it's kind of, you know, to find a, a camping spot isn't always easy. So I usually start with like, where can I sleep? <laughs> and then build my important. itinerary, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, sleeping's important. So, <laughs> but then I just build my itinerary around that, find local hikes using apps like All Trails and um, other blogs and mapping services. As you talk about just, especially the where do you sleep? I mean, obviously, when you're traveling alone, too, you know, that's especially important. How has the technology really helped you in terms of um, not just planning, where can I sleep? Where can I park my van? But just all of your adventures, you know, the beginning to end of that trip. uh, And as you make your reservations. Yeah, I think for me, when I travel solo, especially as a woman, I like to have everything planned out so that I can let other people know my plans, you know, people that I trust. So they'll kind of know where I'm at and where I'm going to be at if something, if they don't hear from me. So that's super important. Technology has been so helpful. I mean, having cell service in some areas, you know, that never used to have it. And just being able to do my research and know what to expect before going into a place is so helpful for me. Um, and reading reviews from other, you know, solo travelers as well. And you've been using technology for quite some time as you have done your camping and your hiking. How has technology changed since the first time you started using it? Oh, gosh. I mean, even just GPS has been massive and being able to, I think, awareness of destinations, you know, it's, it's just so much more accessible to find what's near you, what is available for you to go and check out. I think that's been a huge change, um, at least that I have seen. When you also talk about just kind of the changing face of camping with technology, and you mentioned at the very beginning of this podcast, you know, that you would get out into the outdoors because you didn't have a lot of money. It was a way to really just kind of see California, see America. Let's talk a little bit about equity there. You know, a lot of people hear that if somebody's going out and they're camping and they're hiking and they're doing all these great outdoor things, that it takes a lot of money to do that. Obviously, you're having to pay for your reservations. You're having to pay permits to go in. Let's talk a little bit about the equity in the outdoor space. What importance do equity and inclusivity play in the context of the outdoor recreation space? Like you mentioned, there are so many barriers to access and financial barriers is a huge one. I mean, not even just the fees to get into a place, but like the gear itself and transportation, all of that is, you know, such a big barrier. I think a variety of voices is needed and perspectives. I mean, just locally for me, the indigenous community has been such an important influence in our community. And they've recently renamed one of the state parks back to its original indigenous name, Sumeg State Park. So that's been awesome to see. That's pretty incredible. I feel in the last couple of years, we've we've made great jumps in DEI efforts when it comes to uh, camping and, and the equity there. We still have further to go, but I think in the technology world, we have really advanced it in terms of that equity and inclusion. Uh, as you know, we recently spoke with Brian Ketterer from the state of California about the new Library Parks Pass initiative which is supported by Recreation Dynamics and its US eDirects reservation software. But California also has the Adventure Pass for fourth graders, the Golden Bear Pass for disadvantaged communities, and of course, the Dis- Distinguished Veterans Pass. What impact do you think programs like these are making in the outdoor recreation space? Those are such awesome programs, and I was not super familiar with those before. So that is great to hear that those are available. Like we had talked about, I think that those programs are designed to help reduce some of those barriers that we talked about and bring a sense of belonging to those people in those communities and um, really increase awareness of access and places that are available. I don't know about you, but my mental health and during the pandemic, I kind of relied on outdoor spaces near me to you know, have peace and relax and some respite um, from everything going on. So 
I think having access and awareness of outdoor spaces near you is so important. As some of your fellow Californians start to become more aware, um, as you have, of these equitable programs and passes that give more accessibility across the board, how do you think they're going to benefit from something like this once they are aware of them? I mean, there's so many physical benefits, mental health benefits, um, and benefits to community overall and the outdoors. You know, more people outside is more people caring about the outside and the outdoors, especially when it comes to you know politics and legislation, you know, surrounding protecting the outdoors and the communities it impacts. When you hear about programs like the Golden Passes and being able to use your library card to gain entry into state parks, especially given the inequality that we have right now, why do you think these programs are important to California state parks as well as parks across the country? What difference do you feel that this will make for for people who are eager to get outdoors? I think this is going to be a great way to involve all communities and increase representation of communities that aren't seen as much in the outdoors. And so I think that's going to make a huge difference in getting a variety of people and perspective and change. And it feels like it will help to close that gap as well as years go on in terms of being able to to broaden the opportunity for people. Absolutely. What are some of your favorite parks in California and what is the best way to plan your visit? Oh my, I have so many. (laughs) There's the frequent one I go to near me is Sumeg State Park and that's on the coast. And it's also near a bunch of Redwood State Parks too. So there's like Jedediah Smith Redwood State Parks. There's also, gosh, I could go on about the state parks in California, Um, Red Rock Canyon State Park. There's just so many. But I think what I like to do to find what state park or natural area is the best way, best match for me is I like to go to parks.ca.gov and there's like an interactive map where you can search by activity or region. Um, So you can kind of narrow down and it's always fun for me as a travel blogger to find, you know, places that maybe are a little more hidden gems or underrated places. So I like to start there. And then I like to look, you know, at what season is best to go there, what factors to consider safety wise if traveling off season and then find a camping spot and build out my itinerary using travel blogs and everything else. As you mentioned the seasons, especially as you were chasing the sunshine (laughs) from one (laughs) park to the other, what would you say is one of your more challenging camping experiences that you've had, especially as a solo camper? Oh, gosh, (laughs) I've had quite a few challenging experiences. (laughs) There's been some very unexpected cold nights that I was not very prepared for, especially, you know, car camping or sleeping in a van. Um, That has been challenging. Solo, I think my biggest challenge was when I used to not plan as much and kind of wing it. And as a anxious solo female traveler, sometimes that just doesn't work out well for me. Just, you know, lack of sleep from being anxious. And if I book a camping spot that I know and have done my research and read reviews, then I sleep infinitely better. (laughs) What is it like? when you're out there camping? Like what is your favorite part of, is it waking, uh, of the camping trip? Is it waking up to a beautiful view, listening to the river? What are some of the sounds and sights that that you experience when you're camping? Oh gosh, all of the above. (laughs) I am such a sunset lover. I love to be able to go to a camping spot where I have a view and I can, you know, stay there. I don't have to fight traffic on the way out or hike back down or, you know, anything like that. I love just being able to enjoy the outdoors and then wake up in that same environment and see how incredibly different it can be just with the light change, you know, sunset versus sunrise is so different and beautiful. And oh yeah, definitely the the quiet is just, it's it's kind of eerie at first for me because like you kind of have that ringing in your ears from the constant input that we're so used to and being aware of that just quiet is it's just magical. Do you have a favorite trip that you've taken so far? 
Ooh. <laughs> like one that you just say, wow, that was just really magical. Yes, I have many of those for many different reasons, but I think the one that stands out the most for me is when I solo traveled to Alaska from Seattle and lived out of my car during that experience. And that was a lot of firsts and a lot of challenges and very empowering. When you talk about being a solo traveler, which to me, I just think, by the way, is just incredible off the charts because I don't know if I have the gumption to do that <laughs> as a woman. What advice do you give to solo travelers as they're planning their first trip so they're not winging it as much as you did during your first trips? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I some advice I would give if you're new to the solo traveling is make a plan like I had talked about and letting you know people know your whereabouts. I like to use a Garmin GPS. So even if I don't have cell service, I can still drop my location to a trusted family member or friends. And I think too, like for myself, I was listening to a lot of women inspired travel podcasts to kind of amp myself up before going um, and just knowing that I could do it and just to trust your gut and worst case scenario, you know, go book a hotel or find somewhere safe. What do you wish you knew in the beginning of your travels that you now know? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm capable. I think that was a big learning moment for me. And that road trip to Alaska, there was, I just felt so much doubt in myself. And now after that, I just feel empowered. And I just wish I would have felt that going into it because that would have changed the dynamic of the trip for me, for sure. I can imagine. That's pretty awesome to be able to watch your own evolution as you step out for the first time and think, can I, can I do this? Can I make it through the night? You know, and now to plan such amazing adventures, what, what's on the list for you? What are some of the, I should ask, you know, I, I follow you on Instagram, but I should ask, can we take a peek into getting a preview of what your next adventures are? Yes, it is summer. So it is backpacking season. So most of my travel right now is going to be based around getting into the backcountry. And I'll, you know, be taking my van on, on the journey. But so I will, I used to live in Washington for three years. And that's kind of where I fell in love with the outdoors. Um, and so that I, I will be heading there very soon. And I'm very excited to be outside there again. Is there a challenge of doing this in the summertime? I know that you're in a better climate than where we are in Plano, Texas. <laughs> but what are some of those challenges when you are backpacking in the summer? Oh, yeah, there's, I mean, you definitely have to still be aware of heat. If it's too hot, you know, you don't want to be out in the backcountry with no shade. There's, you know, being aware of thunderstorms, any weather rolling in, and especially in California, the fire season. That's been the biggest thing to be aware of for backpacking and getting outside. Has that ever been a challenge for you in terms of your personal experience of having to bail out from a trip because of the California fires? Oh, absolutely. I've had to cancel so many backpacking trips in the last couple of years. And also I had to reroute an entire trip in the van just to get around the fires. That's something that I think a lot of people may not take into consideration as they are getting in the outdoors. Your tips are very helpful for people to really think ahead as they're planning. One other thing I wanted to ask you is where people can find you across the social media platforms. Yeah, I'm pretty much Miss Rover on everything. Uh, it's Miss Dot Rover on Instagram, but you can find all of my platforms on my blog. That's MissRover.com. Well, thank you very much for joining me today on our Tyler podcast. This has been really exciting because I think you have really helped people uh, to understand how technology plays a big part in camping and how it really has changed the face of getting outside. Thanks so much for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I know I did. I've been looking at campers and campgrounds and doing things outdoors. And so I took a lot of notes and hope you did too. Well, as always, thanks for listening to the Tyler Tech Podcast. We have lots of great episodes planned throughout the rest of 2022 and into 2023. So please subscribe. 
Again, my name is Jeff Harrell, Director of Content Marketing here at Tyler Technologies. We'll talk to you soon.